Uh, like you said, I'm Eric Dubleek. I'm with Gray Millers. Uh, we are uh, a processor of small grains, both conventional and organic, and I guess uh, other as well. Um, probably one of the bigger oat millers in North America and actually the largest organic one probably in the world. Um, so let's dig into it a little bit here. It's going to get a little technical. Like Joe said, these aren't your father's oats. They're different. Things are different than they were 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, production practices are different. Equipment's different. Uh, the things that you have at your fingertips are different. There's so many more opportunities and uh, things you can learn. Um, so kind of with that, what does it take to grow a good oat crop? What are you going to need to do? Uh, what do you need to think about uh, before you plant your oats? What do you need to think about as you're going through the season? What do you need to think about as harvest comes around? We're going to cover a lot of these things. And uh, profitable oats production requires a strategy. Just like everything else, any other crop you grow, uh, there's things you got to think about, whether that's crop rotation, what you're following, uh, what was your crop before, what's your crop afterwards, are you interceding, especially for organic farmers. Uh, that becomes a big thing, whether you're using it to establish an alfalfa crop or just having a, trying to have a cover crop uh, after you take your oats off at the end of July and start of August. Um, your field selection. Uh, if you're a conventional farmer, uh, what your fertilizer rates have been in the past, uh, chemical applications for herbicide, fungicides, and uh, insecticides. Um, your variety selection. That's become a big emphasis for our company over the last few years. Um, it, for the other corn or soybean farmers in the room, you know you really go out there and you select what you're, what you're going to put down for your corn hybrids or your soybean hybrids. We're trying to get the same idea here. Uh, your variety selection can go a long ways in your final product. Uh, weed control. Uh, there's plenty of different opportunities, uh, different things you can work with with your weed control. Um, how you can control the different pests along the way and uh, how oats will fit into that. Harvest and storage and then marketing. I am going to stay out of marketing here a little bit today as that is uh, not my specialty. I'm actually an agronomist so I stay away from that one a little bit. Let's dig into it. Uh, field selection. Relative or free wild oats. Um, if anyone knows uh, kind of what wild oats are, definitely difficult to get rid of and uh, hard to control once they're there. Early planting is your key. Uh, you're going to follow, uh, so for those up north, not so much here in Minnesota, uh, canola is a good rotational crop. Uh, soybeans, other legumes. What you really want to stay away from are your other cereal grains. Rye, barley, uh, wheat. Why do you want to stay away from those other cereal grains? Is a lot of them host and uh, can uh, overwinter some of these pathogens that really uh, attack oats along the way. Um, now what oats can do is they can tolerate a cooler, wetter soils than most other grains, especially early in the year. Uh, it's been known that 90% of oats, or 90% of the oat seed, will germinate at a soil temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Get them in early. That's super important uh, for good test weight, good yield, as they don't usually handle the heat uh, in early summer, early to mid-summer very well. Um, this looks like a bad day over here. I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> That's all I got to say to that. It's, uh, it's going to be a rough next day. Uh, what do you need when you're seeding oats? Clean seed. We recommend certified seed. Um, now, is there anything wrong with bin run seed? I don't want to say yes, but what you're losing there is some, uh, some of your genetic potential as, as you go on. Uh, that will break down. It'll become more disease resistance. You just you, you aren't setting yourself up for the best potential of success. Um, you can treat your oats, especially if you're planting in, in early. If you're not organic, it's not a bad thing to have have them treated with a fungicide. Keeps your mold and uh, decay potential down. Date. You want to plant your oats early. Uh, earlier you get it, you get them in, better potential you're going to have. Now whether that's uh, mid March. You know, we get farther south into Iowa, uh, parts of Nebraska. I'll have guys working on uh, putting their oats in the ground here towards the end of March or around the 20th is kind of uh, when you start looking at it. Um, and as you get farther north, obviously, you're going to get later. Uh, now, what does it do? It's going to get you your better returns in yield and test weight. Now, why is that? Well, as I said a little bit ago, oats don't do as well in that uh, summer heat around July. When they're flowering and uh, starting grain fill, you usually want to try and keep it under about 90 degrees if possible. Above that is when you uh, 
start to see a lot of blasting or it, as they call it abortion of kernels. Um, rates two and a half to three and a half bushels an acre. Final stands in that 18 to 25 plants per square foot. Somewhere in that territory. Now if you go over that, that's fine. I hear a lot of people shooting for 28s, maybe even 30s. Um, really soil dependent and uh, area dependent. Technical stuff, that's what I like to call it. Uh, this is how you figure your seeding rates. Uh, what you want to use is your range, seeds per pound, percent germination, and uh, your desired stand. Make sure it's uh, in uh, plants per acre, not plants per square foot. You'll get some really funky calculations. Um, varieties, upper Midwest varieties that we have here. Um, if you're looking for this area and south and we go east, those are definitely probably some of your four better varieties that you can use. Uh, you start to get west, north of here. Um, you go with that, they do a little better, better in sandier, drier soils. You get those in those warm, heavier clay soils. You're gonna end up with a lot of lodging problems usually. Uh, they just get a little bit taller, don't have quite the straw strength when it comes to that. Um, these varieties over here, excellent varieties. Um, they're what we call an acceptable variety. It's not something we really get out there, either that or we've, they're newer and we're still more of in a review stage with them. What do crops need? Nutrients. Well, how, many, how much nutrients do you need? Well, in a comparison, Oats probably requires some of the least uh, quantities of nutrients, whether that be nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, your sulfur or magnesium levels, um, compared to your other crops. Now what this is, is uh, this is a rates per acre. Now this is what your minimum, the minimum requirements for like 100 bushels of grain. So this doesn't uh, take into account what uh, your straw would require if you're taking that off. So you gotta make sure you're adding those things in as well. But we're definitely on the lower end, especially in the nitrogen category, uh, your phosphorus category again. Um, so it's a good option, uh, definitely for some maybe uh, an organic rotation, uh, nutrient deficient soils if you need another rotational crop. They do really well. Um, weed control, this gets super in depth once we get into herbicides and everything. So I'm gonna hop over this one and go to this part. Now what, uh, what's gonna give you your best weed control? Early planting. Early planting is super important. You're gonna get those oats up. You're, they're gonna start to shade out uh, in between your drill, in your drill spacing, and they're gonna help choke out some of those weeds. And that thicker stand is, is really gonna give you some benefits there. Um, crop rotation's important. You're gonna to wanna to be growing uh, crops that uh, give you control methods at different times of the years for your different annuals and perennials. Mechanical tillage. Uh, I have some guys that'll plow in the spring and then we'll use a, a pony press drill and a packer with that. Seems to work really well, but it gets awful tough and heavy soils. Um, harrowing oats. Uh, now this is something that uh, some, of, some guys do. Um, you definitely want to get out there for oats maybe about, at most about that tall, about four inches is kind of your maximum there. Um, beyond that, you're going to do almost more damage than good. Um, back to the wild oats scenario, you just need to get in early. That's, that's really what you, what's going to help you out the most. Um, plant disease. Now I, uh, I'm going to start sounding like a pathologist and some professors and your local agronomist here. But it's important to know these things. Um, if you're trying to grow a, a quality oat crop, these are some things that can really uh, slow you down and, and not give you the yields and qualities you're desiring. Um, these kind of are your five major diseases that you're gonna to have to worry about, uh, your crown rust or, or your leaf rust. Stem rust, not a very, uh, it's not a disease that we see a lot of. Uh, we just started to see it again next year, or not next year, but last year, uh, for the, probably the first time in quite a few years. So, but, so we could see more of it in the future, but as of right now, it's not something we really have to worry about. Uh, barley yellow dwarf virus. Uh, virus usually vectored by uh, aphids. So if you have a lot of aphid trouble on your farm, this is gonna be something that you're gonna wanna watch out for a little bit more than, than other times. Um, a disease called septoria and then your usual fusarium head blight. Same thing that you're gonna get in your wheat, but it affects oats just a little bit differently. 
and it's usually a little less of an issue uh, as long as you're not feeding these oats to cattle or using the hulls for anything in particular. Um, I like to throw in a little pictures uh, of what this actually looks like. Uh, your crown rust, this is going to be on your leaf, these uh, orangish or colored pustules. Uh, your stem rust is going to be this red or a brick red color up and down the stem. Uh, this over here is, is your fusaria, or your septoria, I apologize. Um, it's going to give you your brown lesions on the leaves, usually on the lower leaves. It's caused from that high moisture lower in the canopy. Um, it, it's something that you usually see quite a bit during the year, but doesn't, uh, doesn't take a major toll on your crop. And uh, barley yellow dwarf, it's called yellow dwarf, but it usually turns leaves red. I'm not quite sure why they uh, <laughs> threw in the yellow term. A lot of people like to call it red leaf. Uh, it makes it just a little bit easier to identify, I guess. Uh, harvesting and storage. Man, let's uh, talk about a lot of material here. Swathing or straight combining. Uh, there's different times that you want to go out and, and do these. Uh, so if you're swathing, 25 to 30% moisture area. Lowest kernels have turned from that uh, green color to more of that creamish brown. Now an oats panicle matures top down. Uh, and usually about 90% of your yield and grain is going to be in the bottom two-thirds of that. So you really want to be careful not to go out there and uh, get after it too early. An old adage that I've heard is uh, farmers will say, well, when you think it's time to go after the oats, go to the county fair for the weekend, come back Monday morning, and then let's take another look at it, and, and let's go then. Uh, desiccation, currently legal. Uh, it's going out there and applying a herbicide to kill off the green material. Now as a company, we uh, don't allow that uh, practice on any oats anymore. And that's, us that's uh, our position due to a quality issue that we see. If it's done too early or done incorrectly, we have milling problems with it. Uh, the oats just don't turn out and make the products that we need. Uh, it, it gives it the same effect as like if you saw a frost on your oats. They're gonna powderize. So we've, we've just gone away from it just due to that milling uh, <laughs> problems. Um, drying, so your target storage uh, moisture, 12 to that 13 percent. So if you're over 13, you're going to want to try and dry it down. You can do that with air. You can do it with a conventional dryer. Uh, however you are set up, bin aeration, just like any other grain. If you have air on your bin, it's good. Run some of that air through there. Uh, you're going to want to cool those oats down. If they're a little wet, make sure you even them out. Get them below that 13 percent moisture area really helps uh, reduce the problem of, of uh, quality issues later on in the season. And as we get into especially the next spring and summer when uh, these grains start to warm back up. Uh, storage, uh, clean storage is super important. Uh, from our standpoint, everything that we do is for food production. Goes into your oats, granola bars, any, uh, most of your oat products that you use if it doesn't have the Quaker logo on it. There's a good chance we, we had some participation in that. Um, so it's really important we really emphasize that clean uh, aspect uh, from grain quality through storage, hey, all the way along the line. It's uh, food production. I, the big thing is, would you eat it, yes or no? Then that's what we want. If you're going to say yes, that's the kind of grain we want. Um, thanks for listening. I know it was awful technical. I really dove into it up here. But uh, if you have questions, be happy to answer them. Otherwise, my contact info is up there. And uh, if you have questions that come on uh, down the road, be sure to get a hold of me. And always happy to help. Thank you.